Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Museum of Comedy. It's nice in here, isn't it? Yeah, as well as being a lovely venue, it's actually a museum as well, isn't it? Did you see outside there's kind of like comedy artifacts and memorabilia? Sorry, one like cabinet that was like Ken Dodd's scripts. Did you see that? Another cabinet that was Ken Dodd's costumes. In another really long cabinet that was Ken Dodd. Yes. <laughs> So, um, I used to be cabin crew, everybody. Yeah, surprise, surprise, a gay that used to be cabin crew, yes. I know. In fact, most of my friends were the cabin crew or hookers. Um, which is good, because it means we can go out midweek. Um, but yeah, I used to work for a budget airline. I don't want to name names, everybody. Let's just give you a clue. It's a bit like Gemma Collins. It's very cheap, it's very irritating, and it's a very gaudy shade of orange. Can you guess that, madam? Uh, no! <laughs> You're joking. Easy chair, right? That's orange. Stupid. For sake, that joke was wasted. You laughed as well. You didn't even get it, did you? How lovely. <laughs> That's very polite of you to laugh at that. Um, so, yeah, I used to work for a budget airline, right? This is a bit of a fact for you all. You know um, when you're on the plane, just about to take off, and the other gays are doing the safety demonstration? You know when the other gays are doing this, and they tell you to do the brace position? Yes, we all know the brace position. Hand between your legs, yeah, you, yeah. We all know the, you know the brace position, don't you? Um, so we'll do the brace position. The brace position isn't actually for your benefit. Did you know that? No, it's not. It's actually to protect your teeth. Yeah, so if you do crash on land or ditch in water, you could be identified by your dental records, everybody. <laughs> How much point of doing that on an easy jet flight? There is, uh, most of those passengers don't even have their own teeth, do they? <laughs> Yes, same reason why they serve pot noodles, too. <laughs> anyway, so it was my birthday yesterday. Thank you, thank you, I was 37. Ooh. Yeah, it's not old, is it? Anyone else 37? I'd like to compare. Who? Oh, how lovely. Anyone else? <laughs> I do like to compare myself to other people of my age. No, but she looks good, you see. I was hoping someone like who lived in a polluted area was going to put the hand up. <laughs> I'd be able to feel better about myself, but no, she did. Um, yes, I was 37, which isn't old, is it? It's not old, is it? We're not old. Oh, yeah, I know, but it is in gay years, madam. Honestly, gay years are like fucking dog years, everybody. I'm like that old bitch from Titanic these days. No, I was in a gay club the other day and a younger gay got up and offered me a seat. <laughs> now, I said, no, thank you. I'm just about to come up off my MDMA. You know, these younger gays are, you know, the type, bleached hair, very skinny, skinny jeans, no socks, no fucking socks. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, these are the kind of people who probably can't even do the Facebook puberty challenge yet, can't they? <laughs> anyway, so he was talking to me, bleached hair, skinny jeans. In fact, the more the MDMA was kicking in, the more I felt like I was talking to Anna Lennox. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, how old are you? I said, I'm 37. He said, oh, well, you're a daddy now. Daddy, everybody. Do I look like someone's fucking daddy? No, I'm not ready to take that title just yet. I'm sorry. Retarded uncle, maybe, but not daddy. Especially not Annie Lennox's daddy, anyway. But I can't... I mean, there's a few of us here tonight. I can't imagine I'm the only person in the room who has um, gotten a few parking fines in the late noughties and had to do a few pornos to pay them off. Anybody? <laughs> quite a shy kind of audience, isn't it? Actually, it's a bit of a lie. They weren't parking fines, they were actually congestion zone fines, yes. Because I actually live in Chelsea. Thank you. Yes, when I moved to London, I didn't realise I was in the congestion zone area. Um, a lot of people do ask me and my boyfriend how we live in Chelsea, and the reason is, he is older than me, he's like uh, 13 years older than me, and he applied for council accommodation 20 years ago in Chelsea. And back in those days, the councils didn't think gays were going to make it very long in life. <laughs> It's true. So they used to just kind of clump them together in nice areas near major hospitals. I know. Surprise, some of us are still alive. No, it's nice living in Chelsea. It's very posh. In fact, even our local ketamine dealer wears chinos and a cravat. Um, so anyway, so I moved to Chelsea. Didn't realise I was in this congestion zone area. And then every time me and my boyfriend would have a fight, I would go for a drive. Which I wouldn't have done if I knew every time I was doing it, it was going to cost me £76.50. <laughs> so you know what it's like? You've got no other options. You have to do a few pornos, don't you? Hmm? <laughs> if everyone could just shout out the name of their favourite gay porn company to me. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I forgot there was an actual gay here. Usually, 
that creates silence. And I did have a little joke to make about that silence, which you've now ruined. So this other gay here has shouted out Raging Stallion, which I know is a kind of big, hairy, bear's bareback sight, isn't it? Yes. That's true, isn't it? So that's nice, isn't it? So you've just shown everyone what kind of person you are. Raging Stallion, thank you for that. So anyone else want to shout out their favourite gay porn company? Thank you. Um, not giving me much to work towards this part of the room. You are. Um, so, well, you'll know, I worked with a company called Trigger. Do you know that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I thought so. You don't recognise me, do you? Oh, no, well, you, yeah. You watch a different kind of spectrum and search for a different genre than me, don't you? Um, no, he will search for different tags, yes. Um, so I work for a company called Trigger, which isn't like your average porn company, is it? No, this is real porn for real people. Do you know what I mean? Real porn, real people. These aren't your real chiselled, tanned, muscled blokes. These are just anybody, do you know what I mean? You know, like when loose women have the real bodies campaigns and they have Colleen Nolan getting the comedy tits out. This is what it is. Real porn, real people. You've got some fat people. You've got some gingers, you've got some lepers. Yeah, I even did a scene with someone with a cleft palate. <laughs> That's too much, isn't it, everybody? <laughs> and all the locations, because it's supposed to be like this rough and ready porn company, all the locations are like job centres, council estates, Wilkinsons. <laughs> and at the time, I was going for the scally look, skinhead, tracksuit, you know, very skinny. Looking back, though, I didn't look like a scally, everyone. I just looked like Sigourney Weaver in Alien 3. <laughs> Anyway, so to wrap this up, I got this email randomly last week from the old porn company saying, congratulations, Mr. Arathun, on reaching your newly founded daddy status. Would you like to be involved in our new political porno? <laughs> I thought, well, yes, actually, I would. I said, how much are you offering? He said, 250 pounds. I thought, well, that's 200 more than the last time, isn't it? So, yes. <laughs> So what do you mean, political porn? He said, well, you know, we're going to put two genres together that's never happened before, politics and porn. I said, I'm interested. What are you going to call it? And this is true. He said, well, we're actually thinking the working title is Hard Brexit. <laughs> How lovely. With the tagline, are you in or out? <laughs> anyway, it's coming out March the 31st, if you're interested. Anyway, not sure about yours. Listen, that is actually my time, but thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. I've been Russell Arathu. Thank <laughs> you.